On February the 16th, 2021, stink team rapper Ketchy the Great dies after being hit by a car in a freak accident on Pacific Coast Highway. Pacific Coast Highway and Pacific Palisades has reopened this morning after a deadly crash there. A person was fatally struck by a vehicle in the area of PCH in Porto Marina Way shortly before 11 o'clock last night. Sky 2 was over the investigation outside of the closed restaurant Sidewalk Cafe. One car involved in the crash drove off the road and onto the beach. The identity of the victim has not been released. Draco mourned the loss of his close friend and collaborator on Twitter, as did many other titans of the rap media game. But soon Draco would take to IG Live to make sure the world knew that Ketchy's death was an accident unrelated to the ongoing beef. You got hit by a car, bro. But you know how these gonna get hit. Yeah. No, no, that didn't happen, bro. That didn't happen, bro. It's on the news, bro. It's on the shit, bro. You got hit by a car about some pedestrians. Nah, you know they finna start, though. Finna be popping it like doing something, something that didn't happen. You know how these be. You want to claim bodies that they ain't do. And it seemed as if Draco was right, because soon after this, the likes of Lil Deuce was on Twitter celebrating Ketchy's death, even going as far as to drop his exact location for anybody looking for him after those tweets. Draco would clap back on Twitter, calling anybody disrespecting Ketchy a homophobic slur, as well as going on IG saying that anybody that's cool with Englewood is a target for his team, even if they're not from LA. Any you hang with him, if you from out of town, you hang with him, you getting chipped to him, straight up, all that plan shit. I just talked about this shit the other day, bro. Just talking about, I don't be tripping up, coming out here, and nigga, with niggas I don't fuck with, I don't give a fuck where you from, I don't give a fuck if you're from Alaska, none of that shit. You fuck with, fuck, you getting chipped. Nigga. I don't care where you from, Texas, any of that shit. You could be from the Bay, Sacramento. You come out here, you f these f is, and you getting chipped. Despite the devastating death of Ketchy, Draco would go on to have a successful rollout that month of his Truth Hurts mixtape and his Drake collaboration. But things would heat up once again on March the 8th, 2021, when No Jumper released a new interview with YG, where he introduces members of his 400 record label. And during the interview, YG appeared to have a few choice words for Draco without naming him specifically, explaining that his crew don't do rap beefs and saying that if they're in a street beef, it's for real and his goons are really gonna get you. I'm not finna be going out there doing no rap this and shit, cause like, if it's smoke, it's really smoke with us. We ain't playing. All that rap beef and all that shit, we don't, we not rap beefing, we really beefing. Hmm. The homies gonna get you. This appeared to be a bold threat, and naturally, it didn't take Draco long to clap back. Three days later, on March the 11th, 2021, Draco reacts to Adam22 doing the YG interview by previewing a song on IG Live with lyrics that say a rapper will get Swiss cheesed, i.e. shot, if he does one more thing, I assume referring to YG. Draco also goes on to post numerous IG stories referring to YG directly, reposting a story that YG put up, congratulating Bobby Schmurder for getting out of jail, with a caption saying people will congratulate somebody getting out of jail from out of town, but hate when somebody gets out of jail in their own city. Draco would then suggest that he wasn't the only person who'd realized this, then posting that he's happy that Bobby got out of jail, before absurdly suggesting that the sting team had started a trend of people getting out of jail. Draco would then turn his attention back to YG, saying that he's not going to let someone acting tough stop him from progressing his career, suggesting that YG didn't help the up-and-comers in LA with their careers, so now Draco's got to do it. Draco then tells YG publicly to unfollow him on Instagram, sort of a humble brag to let the world know that YG is still following him. A week after that, Draco goes live on Instagram, dissing YG again as well as Snoop Dogg and Boosie for not being independent and not beating charges as bad as the ones he beat. I said what I said. Just keep tagging all this, all that. First of all, just keep saying all this. Oh, what about Kenny? What about YG? Not independent. What about Snoop Dogg? He beat a murder, not the death penalty. What about this? What about Lil Boosie? He beat one murder. I beat one murder. Attention, nigga. Conspiracy. Yeah. Ain't getting no money from their music. Stop comparing me to niggas that's broke and scary. They want to break it down when I see him. There's no time it is. Shit open up in April. So all that tough ass shit, see me, you know what it is. Like they don't see the Don riding around LA. What's wrong with you? Clearly Draco was eager to disrespect his ops, but after the loss of his close friend Ketchy the Great, his enemies wanted to do the same thing right back to him. The following month on April the 9th, 2021, Inglewood affiliated rapper Ice Water Rock 
drops a Draco and Ketchy diss song called Ketchy Pack, a song primarily focused on mocking Ketchy the Great's death and showing utmost disrespect by driving over tomato ketchup packets in his lowrider and spilling ketchup on the ground. But while the ops were going low, Draco was going high. Because a week after that incredibly disrespectful catchy diss song dropped, Draco went mainstream, with his feature on Sweetie's song Risky releasing, giving Draco the chance to showcase his talent to a much more mainstream pop audience. Sadly, Draco's style wasn't necessarily what the mainstream was looking for, with many commenters not entirely happy with Draco's performance on the track. But that didn't matter, because Draco was an independent artist, and the last thing he cared about was impressing a mainstream audience. And so Three days after that he would go on to drop a much more independent release, a collab album with his brother Ralphie the Plug titled A Cold Day in Hell. This included more disrespectful songs aimed at his ops like Just Retire, where he says, I'm the reason that all your homies are dying, the only way I see us having it is my way, he's never coming back and that's that, just retire. Then on May the 6th, the Long Live the Greatest music video drops, where we see Draco paying his respects to Ketchy, with the music video showing Ketchy's funeral in great detail, along with documentary footage of the Stink team attending the ceremony. From here, Draco would continue to be active in the rap scene making big moves. Being seen on May the 13th, 2021, hanging out with Drake after the successful release of their collab. Yeah. I'm big dog, man. Yeah, you know what you yeah. want. Uh, two Drakes, man. Yeah, so, yeah boy. Uh, they can't stop it, man. Yeah. They can't stop two yeah, Drakes, boy. man. Uh, man big Drake song. Yeah. Then on May the 22nd, Draco would be seen on social media playing a Frosty song and celebrating him being out of jail, I assume, doing what YG was supposed to do. Ultimately, Draco's fake positivity towards his ops would have its limits. And soon, some of Draco's enemies would end up doing something so offensive they would offend the whole of Los Angeles. At the end of May 2021, another Inglewood blood, who was known to socialise with Frosty by the name of Baby Capone, would deface the mural of Nipsey Hussle outside of his marathon clothing store where he lost his life, tagging IFGB and his own name over Nipsey's face, much to the disappointment of locals with the utmost love and respect for Nipsey. Capone, huh? God. Capone. Yeah. Wall banging Capone, okay. Yeah. After the incident, Capone would go live with another blood from his hood by the name of Indian Red Boy, laughing about the incident, dissing other hoods, and claiming to be 6 OK or rolling 60s killers. Yeah. You know what's going on, yeah. dead on me. Okay. You know what's going Shout on, bitch, dead yeah. on me. You know what's going on, yeah. bitch. Stop playing yeah. with us, bitch. Yeah. Not long after this went down, Draco himself would come out to diss baby Capone and the whole of Inglewood, telling the world that these are the people that he's beefing with. These are the people that don't like me, bro. These are the people that don't like me. These, these are the type of people that they are. Oh, I don't know, you just over exaggerating. All right, now you see. The same I've been telling you this was hoes. I've been telling bro. Now you wanna what, what I'm gonna wait for now? You wanna wait till cross Nipsey face out and do all this on the wall? These hoes, I've been saying this from the jump. Wow, you yeah, right. yeah, bet all y'all dumbass look stupid as a mother. Now, these y'all wanted to group up and click up with it right. and all that and good to go against me. Then on June the 1st, Draco goes live telling his followers that his ops don't last long and that they should check the scoreboard. They don't make it too long though. They either end up dying <laughs> or like catching something or like dying. Scoreboard. Scoreboard. <laughs> Scoreboard. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The scoreboard is crazy. Draco clearly had the ops in Inglewood on his mind during this period. On June the 11th, he goes live on IG once again, this time with a pinned comment saying who wants to fight Draco from Inglewood. And during that live, Draco says he never lost a fight in jail, going on to say the Stinks beat up Inglewood in prison, even Red Bull specifically. Inglewood versus Stink team? Yeah. We know that. No wins. Dead homie. Beating the shit off. Yeah. Oh, Ask every in the county jail. This rap shit on it. Dead homies. We, yeah. County jail. No homies. wins on none of the homies. Dead homies. Yeah. Catch up, Mel. Slap hang out. My brother, my brother knocked Jay Bird out. Yeah. What? Red Bull. Beat his ass. Talk about Seven Flame. Beat his ass. Dead homie. Yeah. No wins. All the rap cat. Ask the bro about fights in the county jail. No wins. Dead homies. I beat the shit out of Solo on the dead homies. No wins. Oh, none of the homies. The ketchup. Beat the shit out of No good. Black eyes. Couldn't even open his eyes. Ask that don't get a, that don't get along with 
they steal bloods. Ask them the real stories. Dead on the no wins on none of my homies. Draco goes on to say that he's even going to beat up his ops and their security at Rolling Loud, and that he loves fighting so much he doesn't need a gun. Let, let's see if you got all that tough shit when we do this Rolling Loud on the dead homies, because you just can't fight, we're going to beat the shit out you. We, we come to jail. Y'all don't come to jail. Dead homies fighting is nothing. So we're going to see when it's Rolling Loud and ain't no guns and all that when we beating the shit out of y'all and y'all security. Why are we even talking about fighting? Fighting is, fighting is fun, though. But nah, we ain't doing no fighting. Unless we getting paid. We can get paid. We can get paid out the fighting. I'll beat his ass with the AP on. Draco goes on to say that he will knock out AZ Chike and that when his ops beef him, their OGs get so scared they have to warn everybody that the stink team might actually pull up to their hood and shoot people. Why he even comment on Ralphie shit on a dead home? He gonna go to his nose fat too. It's bro, he gonna party. go to Chike, bro. Who? Chike, bro, he's gonna go to sleep the first two seconds. Dead home. That's why he's quiet when he's popping that shit. He's be in the background like, hey, bro, don't do that, bro. This is gonna really come over here and shoot one of them in the face. Dead homie. Despite being out of jail for months at this point, Draco still seemed obsessed with jailhouse politics. Going live again around eight days later on June the 19th, alongside Ralphie, speaking publicly on fights that they had with Inglewood members whilst in jail. That guy in the ring with me left out bad, no cap. Never Since I was like 11 that. years old, even that guy in the ring with me left out bad. They don't, they, don't, they don't like bringing up that part. That was Jaybird, he was asleep. Oh yeah, went to sleep in the cell. He thought he was big and all might doing all them push-ups. He got up in the ring and said, ooh. Oh, what? Yeah, red, ooh. They don't, like, they, don't, they don't like to tell the stories how they homies got their ass beat. They got too many, all victorious victories. Beat the shit out of Solo. Nigga, what? Put it out. Draco then begins to tell everybody that AZ Chike apparently only joined the Bloods at age 25. You gang, man, you are a bitch. You bitch. You don't want to tell this bitch you got put on at 25. A few days later, on June the 23rd, 2021, Draco goes live again, bragging about the assortment of cars that he brought when he got out of jail. You see how I came, as soon as he get out, double R, Range Rover, S550, stop playing with me. I'm not the one to play with. Just hated that I was in jail. The real is out of jail now. Y'all got some to compete with. Yeah, homie. He went on to taunt his ops, telling them that he's outside and that they shouldn't even think about pulling up on him. Outside. Where you say I don't be at? I'm always outside. Who was that? It's a outside. They like man, that bitch ass. On live right now, he think he's safe. <laughs> I know where we know where he at. Go pull up on him. Don't think about it. Clearly, there was a lot of danger lurking in these LA streets, and it wouldn't be long until another person lost their life. Because on July the 8th, Indian Red Boy, the blood who had been seen on IG Live with Capone after defacing Nipsey Hussle's mural, would be murdered in the most shocking way, being shot dead whilst on IG Live with Capone himself, quite literally being shot up on camera and dying in front of all of his followers. That footage is still circulating, but is far too violent to show you on YouTube. The war playing out on LA streets was a dangerous game, but thankfully, in between the death, dis and destruction, Draco was still finding the time to drop off fire music. His next album, Ain't That The Truth, would drop on July the 23rd. The project containing possibly my favourite Draco song, Flu Flammer Op, a certified banger that has Draco at his best, came with a music video that dropped later that month, where Draco once again showed off his beloved Rolls Royce Dawn extensively. And on that song, Ralphie the Plug has some eyebrow-raising lyrics, seeming to take responsibility for Red Bull's murder, where he says, Another one dead if you put your hands on this jewellery. All 12 said not guilty, you heard the jury. Draco would also appear to reference Indian Red Boy's graphic murder on IG Live, in lyrics from the mixtape's opening track, Just Dance, where Draco raps, Since they like Instagram, so much they gone die on it, 223 shells rocking in his head while he live streaming. So while Draco was dropping some of the best music of his career, it was coming out to a backdrop of escalating LA violence. On August the 10th, 2021, Englewood members were targeted in a shooting where a car carrying Frosty and one of his friends was shot up and hit multiple times crashing, with Frosty being hit and surviving, but his friend ultimately losing his life. 
Well, more breaking news at this hour, this time in Inglewood, where police are investigating a double shooting. There was a, a shooting here. Two people sent to the hospital in critical condition off to a, a local trauma center. And you see this car that crashed. Looks like it's involved in the crash. It's unclear if the people inside were shot or if that's a suspect vehicle. We don't have any information about a, a suspect being in custody, but two people uh, had to be transported to the hospital. Pretty serious shooting here with uh, La Brea shut down. Frosty would even go live following the shooting, still wearing all of his chains and continuing to gang bang on camera from the back of the ambulance. Ah! Yeah, it's from the dead homies. Y'all know what the going on. I feel like El Chapo, bitch. I'm flaming. New music coming soon. Watch out for that. Go follow me on Snowgirt TV. Oh, I can't feel nothing in my arm. I'm ready to get tatted. Dead homie, my whole shit now. Oh, they had to make me a... Uh, the hand thing so I can throw up the B. I told him if I can't throw up the B on F Street, it's bad. No wheelchair for me on the hood. You know, I'm gonna purchase me some new legs immediately. Stop playing. 5,000 a leg on F Street. I can't hold the phone with my right hand. I can still sock it on F Street. They gotta transport me by myself with extra security. Yeah, on F Street, my dingling still work on flaming. You think I don't got G Wagons and shit following me? I don't think y'all can see it yet. I think we don't got the G-Wagons in the back and all the shits, Rolls Royces and all that. When you a rich, they treat you good, you feel me? <laughs> they kept my chains for me. With Frosty even telling an audience of IG followers that him and his homie Darby had two guns on them when they were attacked, but they didn't get to them in time. All in the comments, I need to see FIP Darby. That's on the dead homies we had two straps on this. It just it like life had happened like that we had two guns yeah, and we still it, it happened just caught us lacking sad while one inglewood rapper was recovering from a tragedy another was angling to escalate the beef with draco on august the 19th 2021 munchie b the blind og from inglewood who appeared in the hood vlog alongside red bull would release a draco diss song called the truth is the truth with the song's title being a play on the titles of draco's mixtape series which were all named after the truth in some way on the song munchie b dissed draco's brother ralphie saying that he stole his rap style from frosty he referenced stink team member solo snitching during the red bull trial he mocked Ketchy the Great for being hit by a car. He even disses Draco's young son, saying he's going to beat him up when he turns 18. A savage diss, but from here there would be much more musical activity coming from Inglewood. As also in August, word would spread of an upcoming collaboration track between Inglewood affiliates AZ Chike and Rucci and Louisiana rap legend Lil Boosie. This would lead Draco to publicly diss Lil Boosie for making songs with his op AZ Chike, with Draco saying Boosie has been picking the wrong people to work with and that he's now lost all respect for him. Though in all fairness, Draco seemed to have been sneak dissing Boosie ever since he got out of jail was one of the first songs that he dropped after getting out being a track called Lil Boosie where Draco says that his charges topped Lil Boosie's murder charges. AZ Chike would respond saying that Draco was trying to blackball him from the rap game and suggesting that Boosie just doesn't care about his opinion. And Chike would later post a story mocking Draco suggesting that Boosie would never care about his opinion. What y'all think that motive was? Like, what was the end result of telling Boosie you lost all respect for him? Was Boosie supposed to take his verse back? <laughs> was he supposed to be like, God darn it, Draco, you're right. <laughs> he's quote unquote losing respect for somebody he's never met a day in his life. They never exchanged words. They didn't even have a prior relationship to what he said. We actually got a lot of mutuals, a whole lot of mutuals, bro. It's who just took a pick with him that I with. You don't see me saying I lost respect for them or none of that shit. And Boosie himself would even later commentate on the situation in a DJ Vlad interview, ultimately saying Draco's beefs have nothing to do with him and don't influence who he's going to collab with. But Draco's anger about his ops getting a Boosie feature was minor in comparison to the explosion of beef he was about to release onto the LA rap scene. As on August the 20th, 2021, Draco previews a new song called Ingleweird on his IG line. One song dissing the entire city of Inglewood. And people were all in the comments telling Draco to shoot the music video in Inglewood if he's really that tough, causing Draco to warn his ops not to be doing all that. Shoot the video in Inglewood, tough guy. Y'all know what's up. Don't do, don't do, don't do all that on my shit. 
Draco would go on to say once again that when people from Inglewood diss him, their OGs tell them to chill out because they know he'll go there and do something crazy. Why you think when that bitch ass diss me, it was on that shit. You know why they was on him? Yeah, they was on him because they like, yeah, he gonna come through here. Yeah, stop running your mouth because you ain't, you you don't got to deal with that when it's come through here and get to acting crazy. Draco would of course go on to diss Rucci and AZ Trike extensively, mainly focused on questioning their street credentials and financial stability. What street shit is Trike doing? I'll wait. Mm. What street shit is Rucci doing? I'll wait. Cause, cause wearing rags and videos don't don't make you a uh, street. How many how, how many bodies did this be? <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> how many times did this even been to jail? <laughs> I'll wait. Have you went to jail for a traffic ticket? <laughs> Suspended license. Burglary. Robbery. Commercial burglary. Oh, okay. Nothing? Never been to the county? Okay. Yeah, 2,500, 5,000, 50, <laughs> yeah, 50, <laughs> all right, what type of cars drive, okay, do have cars, okay, Foot, pull up and slap on it, because you know what I really be on. That very same day, Draco goes live again, dissing his ops, saying they never went to jail like him, and saying again that they're too broke to have cars. Then it to make a song about the homie getting hit by cars and all type of shit, bro. Y'all didn't do that. And a week later, on the 7th of September, Draco premieres the full-blown music video to his scathing diss track, Inglewood. And it's got bar after bar mocking the entire city of Inglewood, saying that he's gonna turn the whole of California against Inglewood, and that he plans on tying up and hanging his ops. He says he'll turn the suburbs of Inglewood to a gym factory, which honestly, I'm still not entirely sure what that means. Let me know in the comments if you know, it sounds bad. He calls Inglewood natives weenies. He says a lot of people in Inglewood are snitches. He disses Rootsy and calls him poor. He disses a AZ Trike in numerous lyrics, including one where he questions why he would join a gang at 25, and saying that he'll hang him up like a coat, as well as mocking AZ Trike and Rucci for still being cold in the music industry despite getting their feature from Lil Boosie. With this being a reference to the fact that their collab track Hoodrack still hasn't passed 400,000 views on YouTube. Draco also says on the song that he dropped 50 on a blind person, which seems to suggest that he was putting up money for a hit on Inglewood member Munchie B, who was previously shot in the head and left blind. Draco goes on to rap that his ops are as sweet as buttercups and that he'll turn their ass to Reese's pieces, with this being an apparent reference to a rumored prison incident, which may or may not have happened involving Munchie B, some peanut butter, and some pretty unpleasant things that I just don't even want to get into here. Draco ends the track with one final dose of disrespect, saying Free Kells, a reference to that Stink Team member who was convicted of murdering Red Bull. Now, I personally think that after all of the drama with Draco fighting the cops and prosecutors, even after beating his case, it's pretty likely that the cops were watching his every move. And I've got no doubt that after the song Inglewood released, the police would have been aware that Draco had just made a public declaration of war on everyone in Inglewood and were probably keeping a close eye on him. And with with that in mind, it's not massively surprising that only a day after Draco released Inglewood, he was arrested whilst riding in the back of an Uber. Draco would actually go live on Instagram whilst being pulled over by the police, with his son in the back of an Uber having a full-scale meltdown as to how the cops knew to target him in the back of a taxi. You're getting detained for 148, delaying my investigation. What is your investigation? I already told y'all, 10 windows. I don't have an ID, and I need to identify you. He gave me his ID. You're not giving me your ID. Mind you, you're you not even supposed to be on. talking. To, exactly, I'm my seatbelt on. I'm done with my son. I know, but I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. I'm back to the car. But now, I want you to put the phone down and put your hands up here. I'm on live. What on. are you talking about? I'm on live. Okay, I don't care about being on live. I'm on live too. All see right. this? LAPD got me on live too. I'll take my seatbelt. You can pick the phone down. If you want to point the phone at me, that's fine. All right. I'm cool with that. All right. I don't know what's going on right now, bro. Um, this is crazy. I jumped in the Uber, bro, to pick up my son, bro. Literally. Five out of one. Have all units respond. North my Bell son is in the car, bro. This is crazy, bro. This is. Got my son with me in the car, bro.
This is crazy, bro. Yeah. I'm, so I'm actually not to go in your pocket. I'm putting my phone in my pocket, bro. No, no, but I don't want you to go in your pocket. What are y'all on, bro? I'm not on anything. I'm not yelling or screaming or nothing. Like you asked you. the Uber I'm driver, asking. bro. Like, ID. Right? I asked you for your uh, ID. We're so we going ID. on right now, bro. And then when I asked for a backup, you wanted to give me your ID. And then I asked you to step out of the car. You told me no. I didn't tell you no. I said, what am I stepping out the car for? Because we have the right to pull you out of the car. You didn't have an ID at first. You didn't have an ID. I just noticed it behind my shit. At first, you allegedly didn't have an ID, so I want to identify you. This shit is crazy, bro. This shit is crazy. What the f is going on? So I'm telling you right now, you're the one who's escalating right. this, and you're the one who's stating you have your kid in the car. I didn't want to do this that, in bro. Kid. But you seen it. You I was behind still, me, I bro. I can still pull you over. Your kid in the car or not? What are you talking about, bro? What the f is going on? So, this is, this is where we're going to be at right now. My supervisor here, I'm going to tell you, my supervisor here, and then we got a couple more units in here. We're going to ask you one more time to step out, and if you say no, then we're going to do what we got to do to get you. It's crazy, and then I'm going to take you out, and then, and then I'm going to take you to jail. What the f is going on, bro? So what, why are y'all pulling me, what did I do for y'all to put me, y'all pulling over an Uber driver, bro? What is going on? But we need an encounter with the program. What is the? Just get out of the car and we'll handle this. Bro, what are you talking about? Just give us a second. Just give us a second. Fine. Right. Let's make this easy. It's not a big deal. Bro, what the fuck are you? This is crazy, bro. Let's do this the right way. What are, what are we doing, bro? Why? What, what is going on, though? Exactly, bro. Why are y'all pulling me over? Driver, he so. said that he put him over for tent windows. This is an Uber driver, bro. This has nothing to do with what is he talking about? Exactly. We'll explain, we'll explain everything. This shit is crazy, bro. This shit is crazy, bro. Let's just make this real easy. You got a bunch of cops coming over here for nothing. Hello, what are we dealing with, bro? What is going on, bro? Look. What is hey, grab him first. We're going to get the Uber driver out first. Hey, go, go ahead and grab the kid. What the f is going on right now, bro? Yeah, yeah, everybody first. What is going on? He's in the seatbelt, sir. What the f is going on right now? Come on, baby. Hey, hey, I don't know your name. What's your name? Huh? What's your name, sir? What's your name, bro? What's your name? Daryl. Daryl. No, I don't, bro, but I don't understand why y'all doing this. That's it. Man, I'm on live, bro. I'm on live, bro. I don't have nothing on me, bro. I'm on live, bro. What are y'all doing, bro? Bro, what are you talking about, bro? Don't fight us. Don't fight us, man. Bro. What are y'all doing, bro? What are y'all doing? I'm on live, bro. Hold up, bro. Hold up. What are y'all doing, bro? 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 Draco would later be seen being led away from the scene in handcuffs, being taken into custody with many speculating he'd been caught with another gun. Following this situation, Draco was taken to the station, he bailed out, and then went live on Instagram, suggesting that the ops are the ones snitching on him. How many times have you ever seen that before? Pulling over over. Pulled over over. Okay, with my son in here. All they're gonna do is tell him, I know. After this, Draco would go live once again, suggesting that somebody from Inglewood had something to do with his arrest, and saying that the ops are hoping that he gets beaten up in jail. And then he like, oh yeah, well, there, there, he talking, he talking about me getting a book yesterday. He talking about some, yeah, well, maybe because he made that diss song uh, against the whole Inglewood, <laughs> like, like, the, like, like, this is a threat to me, bro. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You talking, about, he talking like the police? You talking about? If I wasn't worried. I got smack. You think I'm worried about a diss song? Come on, bro. Well, man, it's... And he said, it's not always going to be the same uh, as last time. And I know what people are saying. 
Oh, yeah, man. Well, he was catching fades last time. Yeah, every time ain't the same. So if I was catching fades last time, so maybe it might be nice this time, bro. Yeah. Maybe, nah, you bitch ass. What you talking about? Two or three niggas. Yeah. That may, 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 maybe, since, maybe, maybe since that nigga died, bro, and didn't want to fight me then, maybe two or, two or three might be bold enough to fight me then. You hear that? Snitch ass. Getting over is pulled over. Damn. Fucking wrong with you. Sadly, it was this moment when fans begun to get concerned about Draco. A post on the subreddit Cali Banging, Reddit's premier community discussing California gang politics, saw a fan pondering Draco's toxic personality, suggesting this might be the reason that he's not going to make it out alive. Pointing out that more people like Draco than he even thinks in LA, but implying that he is sabotaging his own career by leaning into gang beefs, when he should be focusing on his career after getting the industry boost that comes with working with a mainstream artist like Drake. Some suggested in the comments that perhaps it was Draco's lean addiction or PTSD from solitary confinement that had been clouding his judgment recently. With some going as far as to say that if Draco continues down this path, he's unlikely to see 2022. With hindsight, it's clear to see just how right these fans were. Draco essentially signed his own death certificate when he released Ingleweird, but perhaps he just couldn't see it through the muddy puddles of lean clouding his judgment. Naturally, a response to the song would be coming from Inglewood. Thankfully, this begun with back and forths in music rather than violence, with AZ Chike taking to Instagram Live on August the 25th, revealing his new Draco diss song, Lil Stink Stink, with Draco raiding the chat on the IG Live personally to mock and threaten AZ Chike. Draco said, people get smacked for speaking on the stink team. He said Chike's own homies are warning him not to drop the song. He called the track garbage. He suggested that he had sent a request to join the live, which Chike had ignored and just let sit there, and leaving one final ominous comment saying everybody from Inglewood gets killed anyway. It's no wonder that the track got under Draco's skin, when the song itself included sampled audio of Draco being arrested in that Uber only days before. In response to the track, stink team member Money Monk apparently pulled up to AZ Chike's house looking for a fight. Chike where you at, bitch? Uh, I'm at your house. Yeah. And it's your house, Chuck? Where you at? Huh? Where you at? Okay, check, Chike. All right, get in this mother. Come outside and play, bitch. I'm gonna see your parking lot for like 20 minutes, Mark. Yes. In the days that followed, Draco would continue mocking his ops online. On August the 27th, he posted up on IG, wearing sunglasses and pretending to be blind, saying that he's doing the Munchy Bee Challenge. Draco's latest disses had Redditors convinced that he would be dead soon, unless somebody stepped in and talked some sense to him. But since Ingleweird, the line had been crossed, and there really did appear to be no turning back for the stink team now. On September the 8th, 2021, Money Monk would go on to drop the song Peanut Butter Booty Pack, a scathing Munchie B diss once again referring to that peanut butter incident. And a week after that, on September the 16th, 2021, Draco pulled up for an interview on No Jumper once again, this time speaking incredibly recklessly. He opens up by saying that he is a completely different person to who he was in the last interview, suggesting that in the last interview with No Jumper, he was fresh out of solitary confinement and still suffering mental health challenges, saying that now after some recovery Time, he's a cocky millionaire ready to hurt his op's feelings. See, I'm myself now, so it might be a little. See, this you, interview is different. Now. You were saying that last time you were here, you I was were, fresh out of jail, bro. I just, different just version like, of yourself. Like, yeah, bro. I was inside there, goodbye. Like, fuck, I was 30 months, bro. Like, the, it's different now. Though. I'm a millionaire now. It's kind of different. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they mad about. Because everybody was laughing when I was in jail. Same way they was laughing when I was getting booked by the police. In the interview, Draco would also reveal that he was once again booked for possession of a firearm by a felon after being arrested in that Uber. But they didn't press any charges on you or anything? Huh? No, yeah, they, they said, uh... Oh wait, they said they found a gun. Fell in with a firearm or something. Draco would then go on to reference the Munchie B peanut butter incident once again, all while very diplomatic co-host AD tried to avoid saying anything that would escalate things, giving Adam22 a strong eye to try and get him to move on to another topic, all while Draco was warning that the ops are going to be after Adam next. Did you see the part where... Uh, About the peanut butter? Where, no. Mouth, no peanut butter. My bad. My bad. That's Who got peanut nice. butter? That's a whole other situation. Yeah, they might come for you after Adam. Street shit. Right. Okay. Do that. Stay, stay away from me, Adam. I don't want to say nothing about peanut butter, whatever the f that is. What would you do if somebody put peanut butter in your ass? Oh my god. <sighs> well, it would oh really god. depend on the person. Yeah, all right, we're just going in this. Thing. Okay. We're not going to touch on this, Adam, because. If my girl wanted to do that, I mean, it is what it is. Stay, stay away from me, Adam. Okay. Leave it alone, bro. Jesus Christ. All See, right. that's why I told you, man. Are y'all going to be ready for me today? Hey, that's, uh, hey, that's good. Uh, you feel me? Gina's telling me not to engage with this. I don't know what it is. She's just like, stay out of this, Adam. Hey. 
I look, I look, Adam. LA. It's a complicated place. You know place. me, bro. I don't care. Like, and like. But Draco wasn't done clowning Munchie B or dragging Adam 22 unwillingly into LA gang politics as Draco proceeds to ask Adam what he would do if a blind person said they were after him. Hey, if, a, if somebody that can't see said that they was gonna like slide on you, how would that happen? Like, you blind. I'm just wondering this, like, how are you gonna like do anything if you blind? You can't see, you can't even blind. drive. Oh, okay, nobody. God nobody important, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. Mm, I know the truth. From here, a confused Adam says, but he often doesn't know exactly what people are talking about when they make inside references on his podcast. With Adam inferring that he didn't know what YG was talking about when he came on No Jumper and said that his crew are really gonna get his ops, with Draco clapping back and saying YG isn't really tough. Sometimes I feel like people are uh, talking in innuendo on my podcast and I'm kind of like <laughs> not in the loop. Remember the YG interview? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I didn't really like get no, that there I were coded that, though, messages like, in there that you would feel yeah. a way about. No, nah, it wasn't no coded messages because people are not like that, so it don't even matter. That's kind of like what he said. Yeah. Naturally, the conversation would eventually turn to Inglewood, with a newly cocky Draco the Ruler leaving nothing off the table. He started by saying that he has enemies that don't gangbang, but represent Inglewood and are united in hating him, ultimately saying that he will never resolve his issues with Inglewood. That don't gangbang, bang Inglewood like it's a gang. Like Inglewood, and if you beef with anything over here, we're gonna have each other back. Well, I hope all that shit gets resolved. Never. And Draco goes on to say that his ops aren't really killers, saying they don't own guns and their threats against him are not valid. Do not be like that, Adam, I'm telling you, bro. Like, Cause we be laughing and joking about the situations. My be like, I'ma kill you. Like, ah, you don't even own a gun. <laughs> and finally, Draco would end the interview by saying free kills. You any last words? Yep. Free kills. Once again, not all of Draco's fans were pleased at his latest appearance. Redditors on Cali Banging would come out to say they were annoyed at what they described as Draco's arrogant street god persona, with some pointing out that his ego had gotten out of control and saying that he finally got a second chance at life, beating his case, and yet now he's deciding to go straight back into the dark depths of LA gang politics. These are statements that would echo earlier concerns from Draco's fans that his destructive and confrontational attitude would end in tragedy. But at this point, the wheels were motion and Draco's path into one of the most dangerous situations that the gang lifestyle has to offer would now be unstoppable. A few days after his No Jumper appearance on September the 19th, 2021, Draco would speak again in an IG story saying that the Bloods actually like him apart from the ones in Inglewood. Oh, bless me. Mm, Northern Cali Bloods. No, let, me, let me scratch that. South Central Bloods. Compton Bloods, Pasadena Bloods, San Diego Bloods, Bakersfield Bloods, Northern Cali Bloods, Stockton Bloods, Sacramento Bloods. It's just one group of individuals who don't like me. Crazy, ain't it? And a few days after that, on September the 22nd, Munchie B drops another diss track called Last Lap, dissing both Draco and Nipsey Hussle, whose mural was vandalized by Capone. Eventually, more of Draco's enemies would come out to dispute things he'd said. AZ Trike addressed Draco claiming that he joined a gang at 25 in an Innovators interview. What can I gain from joining a gang at 25 that I already got right now. Trike would go on to say that Draco has issues with his homies, not him, but it wouldn't be realistic to be cool with Draco considering the history with Englewood. There is some problems he got going on with the homies that ain't got nothing to do with me. And that's why he mad because I with him and I'm loyal to In conclusion, Trike would say that he believes that Draco is simply hating on them. It ain't no beef. This it's a bitch and he be hating like it's weird. The day after that dropped, Draco would continue putting his pressure on Inglewood, posting a document purporting to be proof that Frosty had snitched. Then on October the 14th, 2021, Rucci and AZ Trike pull up to No Jumper for their own interview, with Rucci mocking Draco for making the song Ingleweird a song all about dissing AZ Trike when Trike isn't actually from Inglewood originally. The song oh, yeah. called Ingleweird <laughs> is oh, about him. Hmm. He's not from Inglewood. They would go on to say that everybody in the Stink team sucks at rapping, apart from Ketchy and Draco, who they say is hanging on by a thread. He ain't it's rapping because the can't rap. Well, there's only one over there that can rap. Who and he hanging with? on by who, a thread. Who you over there? <laughs> little fat boy, little fat girl, he's straight. Like, you know what I'm saying? He do his thing time to time. The only other over there that was really greasy, very talented, like, really some shit, 
RIP was catchy. Drake also appeared in a bootleg Kev interview, saying Draco is simply mad that him and Rucci's careers heated up, and saying that he's only mad because they turned him down for a feature whilst he was still in jail. What the hell happened with Draco the ruler? Because don't you guys have mutual people involved in each of y'all situations. So mm -hmm. where where did things go left? He don't like that we hot. When was in jail though. He wanted to on there though. I told him no. Cause I think would and that was it. Rucci went on to say that his entire hood didn't get on with Draco. My city, I'm from Inglewood. We don't get along with bro as a whole, you feel what I'm saying? So, oh, you just doing that because you with them. Nah, it's the homie being loyal, bro. Right. You feel me? But nah, we just with nothing over there. They keep hating and keep saying something about it. So it's like, we got to give them a little attention. Ultimately claiming not to be happy about the Inglewood song and saying it sucks. What'd you think of it, like as a song? That shit was not tight. Yeah. It could have been better. Honestly. Yeah, I felt the beat was hard as f You know, it didn't sound threatening. Like, <coughs> man. At this point, a whole lot of tension had brewed between the Stink Team and Inglewood. And it really was just a matter of time until the two groups bumped into each other and things boiled over. But for now, Draco and the Stink Team would be more focused on music and money. Spending time performing on their Long Live the Great tour, dedicated to the memory of Ketchy the Great through September and October, with Draco eventually playing a big December 12th show on the bill for LA's Rolling Loud Festival. This was a big opportunity for Draco to perform in front of a crowd of tens of thousands of fans. It must have been an enormous moment for Draco's career, to have beaten the death penalty in a life sentence, getting out and overcoming the trauma of years in solitary confinement, and building up your rap career to the point where you've got thousands of adoring fans screaming his lyrics at the top of their lungs. Getting to this point was an incredible achievement for Draco that's nothing short of amazing. But the sad fact is, this show would be the last one that Draco would ever play.